The last regional finals are just around the corner. So before those kick off, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about PGC points, how teams qualify for PGC, and what placement teams need to get in their last regional final to make it to Worlds. Now, if you haven't really understood how the whole system works, I have made a pretty solid format explainer video at the start of this year that you can check out for the basics. Um, I'm going to assume from now on that everybody knows how PG what PGC points are roughly how the format works. <coughs> We're going to be mainly looking at EMEA and I'll also do the calculations for Americas um, at the end of the video and then we're going to talk about some scenarios that might be a little bit special. <coughs> when we look at the EMEA PGC leaderboard, uh, we already see Twisted Minds are the ghosts of EU PUBG so they have already qualified not only through PGS points but also, also through PGC points so they're completely off but they're also freeing up one more slot for the EMEA region, same for Sonics in Americas. There will always be one MEA team guaranteed to go to PGC. Uh, that's a rule in the format, but Howl has performed so well that they are already going to be taking that slot, so it doesn't really have an effect anymore. Other than that, you can basically look at this leaderboard and say the winner of PGC, of PEC Fall, and the top six teams behind that winner go. <coughs> There's one little caveat here. We don't really know what happens if Twisted Minds wins PEC Fall because the winner is supposed to have a guaranteed slot. So we don't know if that gets handed down to the second place, that win it, that guaranteed slot, or if Twisted Minds just consumes it. This would matter if a team, for example, with zero PGC points gets second place to Twisted Minds, then I'm not really sure if they're guaranteed to go or if they get the PGC points that you would get for second place. <coughs> now I've decided to do a little bit of the math of what teams need to achieve in PEC Fall or PAS2 um, to make it to PGC. And what I've done here is I've written a program that basically simulates random outcomes and 5 million of them, um, where every team gets put into a random position. And then it calculates the chance of what that position means in terms of chances to make it to PGC. So essentially the program will spit out something like if Entropic gets fourth place, then in 60% of the simulations, they made it to PGC. Something like that is what the program will spit out. And it will give us a good idea of what the chances of each team were if performance was random. Because I can't write a program that accurately predicts PUBG team performance. Nobody can. Uh, look at the past performances of some of these teams. It makes no sense. <coughs> so these are the results with 5 million simulations. And as you can see, uh, Twisted Minds, Foot, how they're essentially guaranteed to go to PGC, Ascend, with making finals and with Exalt not making finals, has a really, really, really good chance to make it to PGC, but they're only guaranteed if they get a ninth place. Where it gets much more interesting is when you start looking at the teams below Ascend. Uh, Face Clan, for example, um, they're in a really good spot here, um, partly as well because Exalt didn't make it. And they're looking at um, something like a, well, a top six to guarantee it, but essentially a top 10 to go to PGC. Um, then there's a quite a big gap down towards DA, who already need a fourth place to have really good chances, um, which is also true for Navi and QM, who are very slightly behind. And then SRM, another small step back in Tropic, very similar chances to SRM. And then it falls off to the teams who barely have any PGC points. Um, you can tell that even though they have some, they don't really make a big difference because the 0% teams um, are almost in the same boat, which means they have to get first. A second place is basically never going to be enough. Now, one weakness of the simulation is, like I already said, it assumes everybody has the same chances, right? That's a problem when there's teams that will always perform better. Like, for example, um, nobody would expect a Twisted Minds to go out of the top eight. Nobody would expect a foot... Um, or a Howl to drop out of the top eight. In general, these teams are going to do much better than that. So Exalt, for example, they're in a statistically looking at 35% chance to make it to PGC, even though they didn't make finals. But the teams that can knock them out are FaZe, DA, Navi, question mark, all really, really strong teams. Um, so the chances of them dropping out, I think, um, are, maybe even are maybe much higher than what a random outcome would suggest, especially because these teams, FaZe, DA, Navi, QM, uh, these teams, 
they really need to perform well. Whereas teams like Foot, Howl, um, Ascend, whatever, they can do, they can play way more liberally and they can try out some things. They can try and prepare for PDC. They can try and hot drop. They can do all sorts of things. They don't have to perform in this PDC. So I think there's a really good chance that Exalt goes out here and maybe their real chances are a little bit closer to 20% or something like that. This problem gets a little bit further exaggerated when you look at the Americas, where the top teams are even further away from the bottom teams. There's probably some chances that are not super accurate here because teams like LG and Sonics have such small chances to not finish in the top four. The Sonics are guaranteed a PGC slots through PGS points, and they are also essentially guaranteed to be in the top four of PGC points, which means for NA, essentially, who's getting fifth place on the PGC point leaderboard will also go to PGC. <coughs> LG is mathematically guaranteed. Uh, Sonics is guaranteed. Falcons are in a mega good spot. And then it slowly trickles down where STK, um, they get a top 10. They're pretty solid. Uh, they depend on what teams like Friendly Fire, teams like Elevate do. And then it slowly trickles on down. The main difference to Europe here is in Americas, you can have zero PGC points and get second place in the last event. You might still go to Worlds because they only have three events this year. EU had four. That means the last event is a lot less impactful, but then EU still has that guaranteed slot. So EU is in a really weird spot with these four tournaments now, uh, much different to what the landscape in Americas is. Now I think this is uh, pretty interesting as well, because obviously as the last event of the year, the price pool is pretty small uh, in PEC fall and it's separated over 24 teams. Um, I think a lot of people probably didn't know that, but even a playoff team that got last place in the playoffs um, got some money. So the price pool is very far split, not that big. Um, it's all about going to PTC. Everything is all about going to PTC. So there's a high chance somebody starts messing with somebody else's chances. There's a high chance for hot drops towards the end of the of the finals. Um, if you want to keep a strong team out of PEGC, you want to drop keep a team out that loots close to you, there could easily be some tensions there. There could easily be um, some tries to sabotage other teams. So that's going to be something that we'll have to keep an eye on. That's going to be spicy. And uh, yeah, there'll be a podcast soon. Um, I've got some spicy things cooking up. Hopefully we can get that done before the finals as well. Um, let me know what you thought about the video. Let me know if there's anything you can improve or uh, anything you liked. And I'll see you guys very soon.